John 4. I am a living testimony. Yes, sir. Hey, when, when I say I should have been dead sleeping in my grave, that's not a cliche. That's some real stuff. Come on, say amen. The bullet was meant for you. Somehow or another, God swayed that bullet. Come on, say amen. That accident was meant to take you out. And take you under. But God used it to take you in and to take you over. I'm glad about it. What about you? So when I say I should have been there, sleeping in my way. But he made old devil get back and behave. What should have happened didn't happen. And I'm thankful. Look down your road and say, this is the God blocked it road. This is your cue right there. Look down the other side. This is the God blocked it road. I'm on the God blocked it committee. He done blocked so much stuff. That's why I got so much to thank God for. Because he done blocked so much stuff. Come on, I could have had sexual disease, but he blocked it. Come on, I could have lost my mind, but he blocked it. Supposed to be set out right now, but he blocked it. I mismanaged my own money, but he still kept me in my house. Y'all not saying nothing? Look at your neighbor say he blocked it. He blocked it. It was nobody. I need somebody. Go to seven people say he blocked it. 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 I say go to seven. That means you gotta get out of your seat and say he blocked it. Ah, he blocked it. Ah. Ah, he blocked it. Look at somebody say he blocked. Make two! 
what your step is. But can I help you? Help is on the way. Shout glory, somebody. adjustment to hear that you made that adjustment to hear that hallelujah you had to hear that this next step I had to make that adjustment to hear that John John 4 John 4 thank you son thank you so much John 4 commencing at the First, first verse, concluding at the 30th verse. I'll be reading 30 verses. Uh, chapter 4. Uh, uh, tell somebody, just make a step. This step is the very step that you needed. To take you over and beyond. Hallelujah. I made a step. <laughs> John 4. I'll be reading 30 verses. I have to read all these verses, guys. Glory to God. I don't think I'm going to get everything out today. But that's okay. We can take our time. We've been in the book of John for quite a few weeks. So if I don't finish, we'll pick up and keep going. Even if I stop in the middle of a chapter, we just keep going. That means you got to keep coming so you don't miss anything. One word, watch this, missing can destroy your harvest. You got to get every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, it was his disciples that did it, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. <clears throat> And he must needs go through Samaria, or he must, or he needed to go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. <laughs> now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with this journey because he was walking, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Say sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me the drink. Verse 8, For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drinking of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. There was hostility there, prejudice there. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the world is deep from whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou... Um, has well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, and that says thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither um, in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye not or know not what <clears throat> we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. 
And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said unto the men, Come, see a man, God Almighty, which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. You may have your seats. We've been dealing with the photos of Jesus in our series, the photos of Jesus. But today I want to give another snapshot of the character of our Lord, and it's Jesus, the great soul winner. Jesus, the great soul winner. As we continue, through John's magnificent portrait gallery, we are presented with a new portrait of Jesus. John chapter 4, Jesus is presented, little Kenny, as the great soul winner. Come on, sir. From Nathaniel in the beginning of his ministry to the thief on the cross at the end of his ministry, Jesus was bringing sinners unto himself. Let me pause right here and tell you this. Jesus genuinely cared and cares for the fallen. Can 10 people say amen? Not only that, he is willing to reach them whatever the cost. So in these verses this morning, we can watch Jesus doing that which he does best, and that's bringing sinners to salvation. So let's join Jesus this morning as we delve into this text as he meets the woman at the well. First thing that we see in the text, Robin, is the con confrontation with a sinful woman. Come on. The confrontation with a sinful woman. It's right in the text, John 4, verses 1 to 8. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Joseph, or Jacob rather, gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, um, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noon time. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at that time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. That's right. And the people of God says, Amen. Amen. Let's look at first in this confrontation, the Savior. It's on the screen. Shout that with me. The Savior. The Savior. Shout it with some authority. The, the Savior. Savior. John 4, 3, 6, it says this. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Yeah, yeah. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the apostle ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And the people of God says, Amen. Amen. Let me unpack this in these opening verses. Jesus is shown in his compassion and in his humanity. While Jesus was God, he still was a man. Amen. Talk back to me if you can. Amen. And he was acquainted with trials and with the problems of life. So he demonstrates that he does indeed care for the laws. In our text this morning, number one, we are seeing in the text, he is seen walking. Yeah. His humanity, walking. Yeah. Look at verse six, New Living Translation. 
Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Amen. And the people of God says amen. amen. So essentially, this is the evidence of his poverty. Now, he could have afforded anything that he ever wanted, yet he chose to live like the common man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was supposed to tell somebody that Jesus knows what we face in life because he lived it. Amen. Come on, y'all. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Let me prove it. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Ten people ought to shout hallelujah. You see, this is why he has such compassion on the lost, because Jesus knows what we face in life. Tell somebody, Jesus knows all about it. He knows the trouble and the trial and the trauma that we go through. He knows the catastrophe. He knows all of the ins and the outs because he lived it in the flesh. Yet he was God, but he was still a hundred percent man. He felt compassion. He felt um, fear. He felt all the things that we feel because he was human, yet he was God in the flesh and he was trying to weigh those, those things out together so we could get the best use out of them. Look at somebody say, Jesus knows all about it. He is seen walking and then on the screen he is seen as willing. I'm coming around the corner in a minute. Verse 4 declares that Jesus must needs go through Samaria. I like how King James talk. Absolutely. In other words, Jesus needed to go through Samaria. <laughs> must needs <laughs> go through Samaria. Now watch this. Uh, most Jews get this teaching went dozens of miles out of the way to avoid going through the land of the Samaritans. You have to see this because, Tanya, there was a great uh, prejudice and hatred of the people who were a mixed race of Jews and Gentiles. Jesus, being a Jew, however, was unaffected by the prejudice of the Jews. Talk back to me. Can I help somebody this morning? There is no person or race of people beyond the reach of God's grace. That was a good place to shout. Uh, talk back to me if you can. I, I don't care uh, what tracks you, you come from. I don't care what your background look like. I don't know what your pedigree is all about. God will reach way down. Come on, say amen. To pull you back to himself. So if Jesus would reach out to the most hated people of his day, then it's up to us, the child of God, to tear down every wall of prejudice and reach out to people regardless of where they are or where they come from. Have I got a witness here? You didn't need to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I come from a bad background, but he reached way down to pick me up and I know we don't have a whole bunch of credible people in here today we got some backsliders we got some ex-murderers we got some ex-holes in here but thanks be to God God looked beyond our faults and saw our knees and not only saw our knee but he met our knee pulled us in out of the darkness into the marvelous light translated us into his dear son brought us into the kingdom for such a time as this and if I was you I throw my head back and be grateful and give God praise right now because God has no respect of person. He will save anybody that call on his name. Have I got one witness here? Um, he went past prejudice and he went past avoiding um, the Jews or the Gentiles to reach them where they were. Glory to God. Now notice that Jesus was willing to go out of his way to reach this poor lost woman. This teaches us some, something this morning, Liberty House, that regardless of where we go, God can still reach out and touch our lives. I don't care how far you fall off. Talk back to me, somebody. God can reach out and get you. Tell somebody he can still reach you. Tell somebody he can still. Ask me how I know he reached way down. 
huh, to reach me. Come on, y'all. I was a low down, good for nothing, scum of the earth, back, biting, homong, a sinner on my way to hell. Ho chasing, free basing, cocaine, sniffing, wine, nipping, peel, popping, weed, chopping, cigarette sucking, tobacco chewing, pipe puffing, devil. But he reached me down. Come on, God, to pick me up. Huh, do I got anybody like me? Maybe you got to be over 40 to testify like that. I've been through some hell, but I'm back now because God looked beyond. Come on, y'all. I need about 10 of y'all can testify. I haven't always been where I am today. God did some work on me. Huh, can you lean on your neighbor and say he's still working on me too? Um, I may not be all what I want to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Yeah, I guess I told you I got some ex-folk in here that can testify I'm not what I used to be. God changed me. God moved me. He molded me. He shaped me into who I am. Right now, God can reach way down no matter how far you go off. Ask Jonah about it. I can't hear nobody. Ask David. David said in Psalm 139, 17, he says this, Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even thou shalt thy hand lead me, and that right hand shall hold me. I don't care how far off you go, God will pick you up. I don't care what you did. Wait, wait. Come on, say amen. I said, I don't care. Keep glory to God. God will be there to pick you up. So he is seen walking. He is seen as willing. And then third is on the screen. He is seen as wearied. He's seen walking. He's seen as willing. And Robin, he is seen as wearied. Again, this demonstrates his humanity. As God, Jesus, never tired. Yet as a man, he was prone to the same physical weaknesses that all of us are. So he is seen walking. He is seen willing. He is seen weary. Uh, and now he is seen waiting. Amen. Jesus is seen waiting. Mm -hmm. He's seen waiting on this dear woman you, to come his way. Amen. Now she never gave thought, listen, to meeting a Jewish rabbi at the well. Mm -hmm. Jesus, however, knew she was coming and he was patiently waiting to rescue this lost woman. You, you, you ought to um, take about 30 seconds and be glad about it this morning that he patiently waited on you. Some of y'all uh, had to be dragged through the mud. Your house had to catch on fire. Talk to me. For God to come and see. Uh, uh, or, or you to come to God. He waited patiently uh, uh, for you. So uh, we see in this conversation the Savior. Then we see in this conversation be the sinner. John 4, 7 says this. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. And the people of God said, amen. amen. The second person is a woman who is sinful and is in need of salvation. So then according to verse 6, it's about the sixth hour. Say six hour. Six hour. And according to the Jewish clock, this would be around 12 noon. Okay, okay. Now stay with me. I'm going somewhere. You see, Jacob's well was about a, a half a, a, a mile from the village. So typically, for a woman to be drawing water at this hour would be an unusual occurrence. Because normally, the women from the village, Jody, would gather together early in the morning while the day was still cool. Don't hang up on me. So essentially, these women would go to the well together and sort of catch up on the gossip of the day and spend time talking to their friends. Now, because this woman is alone and coming during the hardest time of the day, here it is, is an indication that she was a social outcast. Stay with me. She probably came to the well alone to avoid the insults and the attacks of the other women. Now, the reason for this um, ostracization is evident from verses 16 to 18. Can I read it? It's on the screen. Go and get your husband. Jesus told her, I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands and you aren't even.
get married to the man you're living with right now. You certainly spoke the truth. Now that speaks for itself. But don't go judging this woman without looking at your own mess. That's the problem with the church today. Uh, we look at the Bible. Watch this. As a window. But we need to look at the Bible as a mirror. Because you're no better than this woman in the text. Have I got a witness here? Some of you right now living with a man who ain't your husband. See how quiet y'all got right there? Maybe not in here. Glory to God. But, but maybe on Facebook. But yet you sticking your ecclesiastical noses at the text. But the text is for our learning. Have I got one witness here? Ostracization is real um, for, for folk. Folk will cash you out and cut you slam off. She was ostracized because uh, of the way she was living. Glory to God. Uh, um, it, 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 it speaks to a loose woman. So she was cut off. And you'd be surprised how easy folk will cut you off. Uh, right here in the church. Have I got a witness here? Don't want nothing to do with you. Come on, talk back to me if you can. I heard a preacher say the other day, I treat you the same way, but I don't trust you the same way. That was good for somebody. Glory to God. Everybody, watch this here, ought to deserve a chance, but if, if you burnt me one time, I'm not going to treat you uh, any different, but I'm going to trust you a little different. I'm going to still love you. I'm going to still pray for you. Glory to God, but there's some things I can't give to you because you done show me your hand. Live long enough, people will show you their real colors. Talk back to me if you can. So that's why you have to watch as well as pray. And I hear what you say, but I watch what you do. But what is the use of watching if you have no idea what to look for? Have I got a witness here? That's why you have to ask for a discerning spirit. Everybody up in your face don't really want the real thing. They have impure motives. That's why the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. Folk will jump on you and rise up to you with some impure motives. Their agenda, come on, say amen, amen. will be all jacked up and crooked. That's why you need to discern and you need to sanctify yourself and you need to purify yourself so you can see it come before it comes. Talk back to me if you can. She was hated even by her own people. She was an outcast. It was bad to be a social outcast, but it was also bad to be a spiritual outcast. This woman was not only a, a natural outcast or social outcast, she was a spiritual outcast because of her sin, because of her lifestyle. Look at Isaiah 59, 2 says, New Living. It is your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Have I got a witness here? Some of you think you could just slouch over grace. Like grace is a license for you to keep on being messy. Uh, 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 the Bible says your sin will find you out. But here, here's for my shouting church. For the wages of sin is death, but... Y'all still don't know where to shout. The gift of God is eternal life. I thank God for the remission of sins. That's why I thank God for the blood. Oh, here's where I get my shout on right here. The blood still works. Grab your neighbor, tell them the blood still works, baby. That's why you got to learn how to plead the blood. Over your family, plead the blood. Over um, your household, plead the blood. You need to go home right now and start pleading the blood all over your house. I plead the blood over my children. Devil, back up. You can't have her. You can't have him. He's a child of God. That's a prophet coming. Y'all quiet here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I plead the blood on this whole road right now. That no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. You need to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, while you're sitting down, you need to get up because the blood. Still works. Um, I need somebody to open your mouth. Throw your head back and saw the blood still works. Hey, it was the blood that came streaming down. It was the blood of Jesus. That efficacious blood that washed my sins away. I need somebody to shout over the blood for a minute. It washed my sins away. What can wash my sins away? Nothing. 
Hallelujah. Grab somebody and tell them, yeah. Nothing but the blood of the Lord Jesus should have been dead, but the blood covered me. All right, all right. I, I was supposed to be seated. We tell 15 of y'all. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, man, I almost got you. I almost lost my mind on that blood, Tony. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lean on somebody say, neighbor, the devil can't touch me because I'm covered in the blood. I'm smothered in the blood. I'm washed in the blood. Nothing can stop me. Look at your neighbor say, I got the blood all over me. Tell somebody I'm smothered in the blood. When the devil comes to attack me, he sees the blood and got to. You can only come so far, devil, until you recognize the blood over me. It's not my education. It's not my credential. It's not my hookup that keeps me. The blood. because I know I got a Bible church. 1 Timothy 2 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. So we see, that speaks for itself, right? In this conversation, the Savior, the sinner, and then we see, uh, I'm about to close in a minute, the scene. See the Savior, we see the sinner. Then we see the scene. Y'all want to see the scene? Yeah. John 4, 7, B and 8, it says this. Jesus said to her, give me the drink. Uh -huh. For the disciples were gone away <laughs> unto the city that by me. That's the scene. And the people of God says, amen. amen. Notice now in the text, first lady, uh, it's just Jesus and the woman. Amen. Uh, I'm about to lose my mind in this place. Uh, uh, I, I wish some of y'all be in my study and see how crazy I get before I preach this to you. 
I try to be, I try to keep my calm before I preach because I'm already excited. Because I know where I'm going. See, when you know where you're going, you're excited before you get there. You miss your cutest shot. Look at somebody say, Neighbor, I know where I'm going. That's why I'm praising God before I get there. Because I'm real excited. Because God didn't only show me one time. He shows me over and over. And, uh, and every time he shows me, I get another a level of excitement. Layers upon layers of excitement. Because he just keeps showing me where I'm going. It's not where you've been. That determines who you are. It's where you're going. Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get a good look at me. Because soon I'm not going to look the same. Because I'm going somewhere. And if you want to go, come on and ride and die. Yeah? I, I, I ain't trying to go by myself. When I go higher, I'm taking somebody with me. Uh, uh, it, it's just, in this scene, if you see the scene, it's just Jesus uh, and this woman. Uh, here it is all the distractions of her life <laughs> have been removed I'm, I'm coming that's where I'm coming from all of her distractions uh, of her life have been removed let me pause right here and, and if y'all don't shout I'm not going to talk to you for the rest of the year here it is God is moving all your distractions right now oh, oh, oh. Y'all not shout. Don't talk to me. Now, I ain't giving you no more word. I just gave you a word that's going to release you into your tomorrow because you got so many distractions. And God said, it's just going to be you and him this season. Nobody going to help you. It's just going to be you and God. He going to move all your distractions. If they walked out, bye-bye, it was me. on somebody tell them God getting it out the way for you come on tell them God getting it out the way for you you distracting me whining and complaining you distracting me down in my vision you distracting me with your doubting self God already showed it to me get out of my life get the stepping he removed the distractions I came here to tell you today, that's your word. God gonna remove all your distractions. In other words, he, he's gonna undistract your mind. Folk will still be in your life, but you're gonna be unbothered. Hey, you miss your cue to shout. Grab somebody, tell them I'm unbothered, I'm unbothered. Whatever they do is not gonna get in my way. I'm going to stay focused. They can come. They can go. But I'm going to stay focused. Tell somebody, focus blinds you. Focus blinds you. There's some stuff you can't see. Because God going to remove all of your distractions. The distractions of her life have been removed. Let me work. Not some. Not seven eighths. Not one third. Not a quarter. Not a half. He removed. This scene is what you got to get. Look at your neighbor and say, Scene two is over. I'm in my Father, Son, and Holy Ghost scene. I'm in scene. A threefold cord. Not easily broken. Tell somebody, I'm in a new scene. A scene of no more distraction. The distractions have slowed you down long enough. 
Yeah, your boo has been a distraction. I wish I could go all the way into it. But I'm going to let you fill in your own blank so you can get what you need because I don't know really what you need. All I know is all of them. going to be removed. And when they're removed, you can see clearly how to obtain that which God intended. I wish I had somebody. Tell somebody I can see clearly already now that the fog is gone. Whatever your fog was, God going to remove it. Let me, let me. Let me quit. I could stop right there, but I'm going to close on a, a, a low note. I'm going to close on a low note to keep this in your spirit. Uh, the disciples were gone about me. None of her five ex-husbands are present. Her current fo- co-fornicator is nowhere around. None of the women who hated her and her lifestyle could be found. It's just her and Jesus. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been there? Just you? Well, if you haven't been there, keep living long enough. Because God will let people break your heart and leave your life. So it just be you uh, and him. It's good to see this because ultimately it always comes down to just you and him. In the end, all that will matter. Is what you did with Jesus when you had the opportunity. So number one, the confrontation with a sinful woman. And we'll pick up next week with a conversation with a sinful woman. All your distractions in this scene is off. No one will have the ability to delay the vision that God gave you. You had so much purpose, but you've been sidetracked. Watch this. By petty distraction. Petty people. God says, this season, you don't need a team. All you need is me. I can do by myself better than any team that you can conjure up. When I got that word for myself, I said, okay, God, I'll be distracted by who coming, who ain't. God said, if nobody come, I'm here. And if it's just me and you, worship me. In spirit and in truth. And in truth. Jesus was so winner. The Bible said that he came that he may seek and save that which is lost. And when you get undistracted, that becomes your purpose. To seek and save. The devil wants to distract you with all sorts of stuff but the purpose of Jesus. So you'll run yourself raggedy trying to get this, do that, be this, be that. And it's all a distraction. Jesus said, I want you with me. When you get with me, I give you all that you've been trying to get. But you can't reverse my order. Seek ye first. Come on, you can say it with me. The kingdom of God. And and all these things that the heathen seek after. Cause, money, homes, businesses, fame, popularity, property, prestige. The world seek that. The Christians seek him. God is looking for seekers. And when you're distracted, you can't seek properly because you're seeking your business, not him. You seek him, God will sort out your business. When you 
fall in love with Jesus. All I'm going to preach is him till you fall in love with him. That when you wake up in the morning, you don't run to Facebook, you run to Jesus. So, Father, thank you tonight for your power. Thank you for a quick show word. I'm undistracted now. And keep my mind. Say that with me. Keep my mind. <laughs> Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finish of our faith, who endured the shame of the cross and died for a world who didn't deserve it, became a ransom for many, and your efficacious blood washed our sins away. How can we not be undistracted? All you've done for us. Thank you, sir. I'm grateful. You're so good. Those that may be watching, we pray for you. You seek him for us. And as our ministerial stewards come, we want to open the doors of the church, even online. You may not have a church home. This can be your online church. And I look through the comments later if you need a church home. You need a pastor. You need somebody that sincerely loves God, that preached Jesus. And what's the best for the people of God? Or in fact, you may be here. You visited today. We ask you to come right now. One coming already. Would there be another? Come on out there, see. Come on, make your move today. Come on, make your move today. Play me something real joyful. Yeah, that's good. A little bit more. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. That was joyful. I just couldn't hear it. Thank you, baby. Thank you for coming. You're joining the day. Thank you for coming. We're so delighted to be your church family. I'm so pleased to be your shepherd. We're going to build relationship. We're going to work through it together. You know, one preacher told me, you know, most churches want to clean their church out. They just want to clean their church out. It seems like everybody want to clean their church out. And the church is getting cleaned out. Everybody that dirty, they're putting them out. He said, if you want to clean out your church, I want you to come. I want you to put everybody out because everybody dirty. But he said, before you put everybody out, preacher, you get out. <laughs> if you want to clean out the church, everybody want to clean out the church. But the church is for those that may come that need help and love. Why would you put the sick out of the hospital? So we both together are going to join in this ministry and learn more about him as we go into the word of God. Thank you for coming. Your day should never be the same again. And today your distractions have been removed. Then you can focus on him and everything that God desires for your life. Our prayer is that it come to pass and it blows your mind that the blessings of the Lord will overtake you. And you shall be what God intended for you to be. Come on, everybody. Let's praise God for our new family sister. Hallelujah. God saw her soul today. Anybody else want to come? Come on, get out those seats and come on and join this church today. This is where you want to be. You know it. Come on, say amen. Come on, get on this team and help us build the kingdom one brick at a time. Come on, get out that seat. You can do it. Do it right now. Leave that person. Leave that bag. And come on and say, I want to make a move today. I need God today. I want to make this move today. Come on, there's another one coming. I was talking to you, girl. You felt it, didn't you? You know I was talking to you. I was looking right at your heart. And God said, there's one right there that needs some love, some unconditional love. Yeah, I know you've been through some stuff, but God said, don't you have to worry about it. Even though you got to cry right now, God said, I'll wipe your tears from your eyes. For the scripture says, weeping may endure it. For a night, but joy coming. Your morning time is here, baby. That's right, worship him. It's been hard, but God says, I've been with you. You couldn't get away from
from me too far. I had my hand on you. I had my heart on you. I had my mind on you. Mindful is he that thinks of his children. Oh God, and shows pity as a loving father. Thank you, God, for your newfound daughter. Oh, she's a daughter of Zion. And I feel the spirit of the living God now moving in this place. I need some worshipers that would thank God for this daughter of Zion. She made it in and the devil tried to kill her, but she touched down. I need somebody shout glory. To God be the glory for the great things that he's done. Go ahead and worship your God, baby. You in a house of freedom. You can worship 